Uh, today I'm going to be giving you a tip on shading in Anime Studio Pro. This works for all versions of Anime Studio Pro uh, with the exception of maybe one feature but I'll explain that uh, when I get to it. Uh, but just a little bit about shading. I think shading helps to make an animation look more professional especially when it comes to setting lighting and mooding. Now there are three methods that I personally use. Uh, one is the built-in shading tool that comes with Anime Studio Pro. The second method is just you know connecting points and filling in those shapes and creating I guess more hard drawn shading. Then the last tip is using masking. Now each have their advantages and disadvantages. I will go through those as time goes by but in this video I'm only going to be touching on the built-in Anime Studio Pro shading. Now take a look at this scene. It's an overhead shot of a gentleman writing with a quill pen and he has a candle in front of him. Now let me just render the shot to show you something. So as you can see here he's in the dark and there's this candlelight in front of him but his entire body is illuminated which is unrealistic seeing that the only light source is in front of him. So I want to add some shading. With this method I'm going to show you how to add the shading with the built-in Anime Studio Pro shading tool. Here we go. Well, it's not really a tool, it's more of a property. So the shading properties. Now, if I double click on the group layer that the character is in, this will allow me to shade the all of the different parts or all the layers of the character in one go. So, I click on shadows. Wait, let me just go back, Mr. Steph here. So, I double click the group layer, it opens up the properties, I click on shadows and after clicking on the shadows tab I go down to layer shading. I turn on, I, I, click, I check shading on. As you can see the settings are offset of 24, blur of 48 and the shading direction is 315. Uh, the shading color is pretty much a transparent or translucent black. Uh, shading threshold is unchecked, contraction zero, inverted unchecked. I'm going to click apply and we're going to see what happens. Click OK. Let me render. So, still doesn't have the desired effect. What we're getting is a very soft gradient of shadow. This does not really give us the effect that we want. Let me close and we're going to try another effect because this lighting is way too soft. A candlelight like that would give a harsh shadow, especially that close. So I'm going to double click again and change the settings again. I'm going to change it one more time. I'm going to actually half the blur or actually, yeah, I'm going to half the blur to 24. Click OK. Render. And it's still soft, it's just not quite giving us the effect that we want. And the darker shading is closer to the candle, which is unrealistic. Really and truly, this area here, like the back of the head and the back, would be darker than the front. The front would be, you know, very illuminated from the candle. So let me show you what I would typically do in this situation. So double click. Let me just close that. Shadows. I would put the blur to zero because the shadows are going to be so harsh that there's, there isn't going to be any blur at all. It's not going to be soft and gradual. I'm going to leave the contraction at zero, leave the shading threshold at zero. And uh, I'm going to click invert it in a minute, but I just want to show you what this looks like. So I'm clicking OK, render again. So we definitely have, you know, a harsh shadow. It's a little bit strange. We might have to play with the angle here. But the fact is the lighting is still in the wrong direction. Now, here's one way of, of, of dealing with this. 
we can double click on that group folder go to shadows go to shading and change the direction because the thing is that this direction here is the direction of the light so it's assuming that the light is coming from from here to here or or what I would say is northwest to southeast right we want the lighting to go this direction because the candle is on this side of his face so we want the, the, the lighting to go in this direction uh, southeast to northwest let me click apply click OK render so there we have the shadow on the back of his head and in front of him is lit up and that's fine but the problem is too much of him is lit up that is not realistic you know the, the, the candle is pretty much almost on the other side of his face so we'll be getting a majority of the shadow on the back here with just a little bit of rim light or highlight now let's go back to our settings we could increase the offset that's a possibility let's do that apply see what happens and we do get some more shading coming over but still just not enough you know the amount of his head that, that, that that's lit up would suggest that the candle would be more over in this direction but it's over in this direction kind of you know his face should be blocking a good amount now instead of trying to figure out how much offset you should have here is a, another method I don't ever remember seeing inverted in anime studio pro 9 or 10 this might be a feature that comes with 11 I'm not sure you guys can let me know but let's click inverted apply click OK look at that now the opposite side of his face is darker and the side that had the shading is lighter this has the rim light now if we're getting closer to what we want of course the shadows are in the wrong direction the light is here his head is blocking it we wouldn't have a rim light here unless light was coming through a window or from another light source but we can change the lighting direction back to its original let's just give it 315 click apply ok render and look at that now I have the lighting the way I want it the front of his face has a nice little rim light or highlight if you will just illumining this portion of his face so it's almost like the candle is slightly spilling over the round of his face here but then when it gets here the shadow starts to you know harshly come on board and it's a nice two-tone shading so it, it, it has that cartoon look to it and I pretty much like this look you know I like this look a lot not saying there's anything wrong with a soft shadow look it's just that i think a soft shadow look should be saved for something like moonlight or some other soft lighting source this candle is a harsh lighting source close to the subject it would give it a harsh light and this is the effect that i'm looking for now don't get me wrong this 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 method of shading is not always ideal it's not ideal for every situation you'll find some situations where it's going to create some very strange looking shapes like if you look right here this little hook you know it doesn't look that bad this is actually the nose like it's providing a shadow for the nose now you really wouldn't have a shadow for the nose right here on the face per se but it doesn't look that bad so we can live with it but in another rig it might look completely strange in which case I would suggest one of the other methods that I'm going to go through in another video uh, so I would say hey play around with the, the the shading properties you know a lot can be done with it uh, you know I, I didn't show you what contraction does contraction basically kind of uh, what's the how do I describe it it kind of helps the shadow spill over a little bit more um, let me put it to an extreme like 40 so that you can see what it does more clearly it's taking a while to render yeah so pretty much it it kind of spills the lighting or the shading a little bit 
more inward, so to speak, contracts it. Uh, but, you know, look at this. It's kind of giving all kind of funky lights from all over. I mean, you could use it if you just wanted to kind of speck light sources around, but I don't want to do that in this particular case because as you can see, it's kind of lighting up his ponytail. It's kind of lighting up here. And that's not the intention I want. This scene, pretty much the candle is the only light source. Uh, and to be honest with you, I've never really played with shading threshold. So I'll just leave that alone. In fact, I don't, I'm not even able to select shading threshold. I'm not sure why. Maybe if, let me see. No, I was hoping if I put in a blur that something would come up. No, well, yeah, so we can forget about this shading threshold for now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my tip. Hopefully this comes in useful for somebody else. Uh, I find this very useful. I use it all the while in a pinch. And I use the other two methods when I want some more sophisticated looking shading. But of course, those come with their advantages and disadvantages. This method is quick, easy, and painless. And in a lot of cases, the shading even tries to move as realistic as possible. So it even looks like the shading is animated. So it's a very good tool to use. Check it out. Don't underestimate it. So until next time. Be sure to like, share, subscribe and check out my other videos.